Welcome to our God's Word for today devotional, my friends and brethren in the Lord. And if this is your first time to join with us, welcome. And our devotional today is on Romans chapter 2, verse 4 to 5. And let me read to, to us this morning these two verses in the English Standard Version. Or do you presume on the riches of his kindness and forbearance and patience, not knowing that God's kindness is meant to lead you to repentance? But because of your hard and impenitent heart, you are storing up wrath for yourself on the day of wrath, when God's righteous judgment will be revealed. So we ask this question today, why does God shower us with his goodness? The Bible tells us that all men, including ourselves, are sinners. Thus, all of us deserve to receive his wrath and judgment. But in this particular chapter, particularly in the previous three verses, Romans chapter 2, verse 1 to 3, which we have learned yesterday, there were some people who might have thought that they are exempted. They are the moralist people. Most probably, they were predominantly religious Jews with few Gentiles, proselytes who sided with them. And they assumed that they had a special status with God because they are uh, following the, the ceremonial law and they are moral, morally upright in their own eyes. They are self-righteous. So this kind of attitude has prompted them to be judgmental even to other Gentiles who are sinful and they were complacent towards their own sins. This attitude is presumptuousness, plain and simple. So they are self-righteous and they presume on uh, or showing contempt for the riches of God's kindness, forbearance and patience they receive from God. But despite their pride and arrogance, God has been good to them. Suddenly, the receiving of the material blessings from God is interpreted as both a confirmation and approval of their self-righteousness, pride and or proud and arrogant spirit. A presumptuous sinner may say something like this: What I am doing is right and is approved by God, although according to the Bible it is sinful, because they think that and they believe that it's a blessing because God has approved it in terms of providing them good health, riches, and many other tangible things in this life. In other words, if a person is continuing in his sin, like for example, adulterous, he's a cheater, he's a liar, and then he's promoted in his job, he is doing good in his business, his good health, he will interpret it in this way, that God must be good to me and God must be approving these things that I do because he did not rebuke me or discipline me or judge me by the things that I'm doing when in fact he blessed my work, he blessed my business, he blessed my life. I have good health, I have good family and he continues to do his own wicked and evil practices. God's goodness and mercy are poured towards undeserving sinners as he sends both sunshine and rain to all. Remember, when God will send his rain and his sunshine, it's not only for a selected few. It is for everyone. We call this the common grace of God, the goodness of God. And God's kindness and patience should not be interpreted as his approval to our sins. Take, for example, a tardy and irresponsible student who always passes papers late. And all the time, his kind teacher has been patient and have tolerated him. Until one day, the teacher penalized him. His response was not expected as he said, Sir, since my freshman days until now, I have, pa I have, I have been okay because I have passed all my subjects. You are so unkind to flunk me now that I'm a graduating student. So what can you say about this guy? 
as he continues to receive the goodness of his teacher, he assumed that it was an entitlement that he deserves to pass because he has been tolerated by the teacher many times over. In fact, in all his tardiness and, and his lateness of passing his papers in the past, the teacher has been good to him, but he interpreted it as an entitlement. So we ask this question today, why God is patient and kind to the world full of sinful people? Why did, or why does God shower us with his goodness and even he delays his coming? Peter has his answer in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9, when he writes there, The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise, as some count slowness, but is patient toward, toward you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should re reach repentance. Why God is good and still delaying his coming to judge the world. Remember, when the Lord Jesus Christ will come, he will judge his world. But he delays his coming. For what reason? Because he is not willing that any should perish. He is not willing that any should be condemned and to be judged because of their sinfulness, but that all should reach repentance. So every day, as we receive his goodness, as we experience his patience and his blessings, is a, a, a sign of God's love and compassion and mercies that you and I had to be thankful because if not for that, we will not be able to know him and come to that realization that I have to repent of my sinfulness and believe on Jesus. Just because that God is good to us in this moment of our lives, should we assume that God is okay with our sins? Definitely not. It is a dangerous presumption, is it not? Life is a privilege, not an entitlement. God's kindness for you and me today is meant to lead us to repent to or turn away from our sins and not continue in it. In fact, those who refuse to repent from their sin are storing up God's wrath for themselves, according to verse 5. God's judgment is sure, though it's slow. As somebody said, the meal of God's judgment is moving slowly, but it's sure. Judgment will happen someday. Someday Jesus will come and will express his wrath on that day of wrath, quote-unquote, the day when his righteous judgment will be revealed. But as Peter said, as he continued in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 10, but the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a roar and the heavenly bodies will be burned up and dissolved and the earth and the works that are done on it will be exposed. Remember, my friends, this is the word of God and it will happen today, tomorrow, or a few years from now. It will surely happen, as God said through Peter. So instead of presuming, we should be repenting every day. We should be changing in our minds, in aligning, aligning our, our minds unto the minds of God. To repent means to change our mind. Instead of believing this lie that, oh, I'm entitled to God's goodness because I receive all this goodness every day. Anyway, God is good to me despite of my sinfulness. It is not an entitlement. It's grace. It's a privilege. But as Peter exhorted us in 2 Peter 3, verse 11 to 13, that he will come and then dissolve everything in this world because he's going to judge this world. Let me read what Peter has written in 2 Peter 3, verse 11 to 13. Since all these things are thus to be dissolved, what sort of people ought you to be in the lives, in life, in lives of holiness and godliness? waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set on fire and dissolved, and the heavenly bodies will melt as they burn. But according to his promise, we are waiting for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. So this prospect or this hope, we're looking for this 
hope, blessed hope, the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. That is what should dictate our attitude and belief right now, not to be proud, not to be arrogant, not to be presumptuous and feeling that we are entitled in this life, but to be always thankful, grateful for the mercies and, and compassion of God. It is of His mercies that we are not consumed. Lamentations 3, 22 and 23, great is His faithfulness. Remember, God's goodness does not, is not given to us or is not shown in order for us to be presumptuous, but to be repentant. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word today. Lord, um, forgive us for our presumptuousness. Sometimes we are deceived by our hearts that everything must be okay, although we know that there's something in our hearts that we need to settle before you. But you are always good, Lord, despite of our sin, sinfulness, despite of our failings before you. You remain faithful to us. You don't fail to provide what we need in life, Lord, every day. You are so good. The sun, the rain, the air we breath, and everything, the good health. And Lord, you shower us with your goodness for us to be reminded that you are our God. And we should not interpret and, and make this as a reason that we should be complacent, but be always repentant, Lord. Thank you for this reminder today. I pray that those who have not trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as yet, that they will have this, their eyes open and be, will believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and trust Him as their Savior and be saved wonderfully. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Mm -hmm.